right. So, Skazoet Angst, thank you for joining me today. Um, would you like to maybe start by telling me a little bit about yourself and your work, what you do? Oh, man. Okay. I don't know. Let's see. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, well, uh, I have a channel uh, in which I navigate discussions and conversations and everything else relating uh, to schizoid uh, issues, bioma, concerns, anxieties, blah, blah, blah. I talk about support, advocacy. I have some pretty radical ideas about mental health stuff. Um, uh, you know, like putting the human first, which is like, I, I think pretty wild. And, um, uh, and also I'm trying to create a, uh, well, I have a server in which uh, created somewhat of a community for people that are schizoid um, and stuff like that, which is kind of like weird to hear because community and schizoid isn't like something you generally put together, but it seems to be working. It seems to be having uh, positive effects on their overall mood and demeanor and their ability to kind of enjoy their day a little bit um, to whatever degree. Uh, and I'm just going in every direction possible with this big Schizoid Inks project to um, to do what I can to get the word out and get shit going. Oh, by the way, can do I have to avoid bad words? Because I don't think your channel has bad words. Well, just feel free to say whatever. Yeah, I there were a couple of times I used bad words too, so... Oh, yeah. you use bad words? Just, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so feel feel free to... All yeah. right, so... Express good. yourself. Yeah. Okay. So what, what got you started? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead. So what got you started on your channel? Why did you pursue that direction? Um. Well, initially it was because... Uh, I'm an old, I'm older than I might look, uh, but I'm 37. So um, I spent quite a few, dec uh, a decade or two there, just kind of wandering around, um, trying to figure out what's essentially wrong with me. Uh, I couldn't connect to people. I didn't, I didn't enjoy a lot of like cultural um, traditions and et like ethnic stuff in my own family growing up because I'm Latino. Costa Rican, like I was never into the uh, social commingling and like a lot of the rituals and traditions and everything associated to that. And so I always felt like the black sheep in my family. Uh, and then once I, you know, set out on my own in life, like I still felt alienated and disconnected from people. So then I was like, what's wrong with me? Like, so just like a lot of schizoids out there, I started like investigating, like, why don't I, why am I like this? Why am I like this? Why is this and that? And then, um, you know, uh, I went through a, a phase where I thought, oh, I'm just uh, I'm just doing it wrong. So I have to do it right. So I have to change my behavior and be um, like more social, force myself to be more social because that'll fix me. And, you know, I did a lot of that stuff. It didn't work. And then eventually when I found out about my diagnosis, um, I was like excited because I was like, oh, yay, uh, finally, I have a name for what is going on. All, all I have to do now is Google it, right? And it's going to tell me everything I need to know and make my life so much better. And no, no, it didn't do that because I guess I just got lucky enough to have the thing that nobody cares about or talks about or does enough research about. And so um, I was mad and decided... I'm going to make my own channel. I'm going to make my own thing where we talk about this stuff um, because I don't see a lot of this stuff. Uh, I think maybe your channel was one of the few that actually talked about it in any kind of meaningful way. So uh, everyone else was just uh, regurgitating DSM stuff that wasn't very useful. Like it's just a Wikipedia page over and over. So um, at least on online, right? So, and then yeah. any, any community I tried to join was kind of wrought with problems or weird, just stuff I didn't like. And so I was like, okay, well, there needs to be a community. So I tried to make that too. So I, I, I just I just decided to do what wasn't there because um, I was mad because it wasn't there. And, it wasn't, and I'm sure other people were upset too. So I was like, okay. Yeah. It. That's it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it all kind of started from your own kind of personal problems and you, you felt like you couldn't connect mm -hmm. and you kind of didn't really fit into your like 
cultural maybe background your your, your family stuff and, and none of it none of it to be honest yeah. uh, even like peers and friends and stuff i was always like i don't understand why people want to go to these parties and do these things and, and care about what you know what jimmy or susan said about you know paul and whoever you know like all this all this gossip and conversation was just like i don't i don't understand and i was the weird one for not understanding so a lot of years of masking too so yeah but anyway that's the that's, uh, we'll get to that yeah so you did kind of try to change yourself to to fit in to, to oh, make it work of course. So yeah that was my mm -hmm. 20s for sure I was like, I had no, I didn't think uh, there was an option, especially before I got the diagnosis. Like, I just thought, oh, um, I must be broken or need to fix myself or something. Like, I was doing all kinds of stuff that was counterintuitive to me, which is like hugging people. Uh, mm. I thought, oh, if I hug my friends more, I'll start feeling like they do about hugs. And no, I never did. Uh, but I kept trying to make myself like, I was almost like gaslighting myself for a really long time. Because I didn't, I didn't know what else to do. Because I didn't, I thought, um, I thought I was the one dealing with nothing but some kind of pathology that made me incapable of, like, mm. enjoying the things that human beings are supposed to enjoy the way they're supposed to enjoy them. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so there was this kind of, I don't know, like a kind of split, but be between your your real authentic self and how you felt internally and what you were doing externally. And your behavior so kind of your behavior was like forced but it wasn't really coming from how you felt or how you what you believe in no not at all yeah i mean it was just because i didn't know what i believed i didn't know who i was um i didn't have a sense of identity that um would i could explain to others um that would make sense to them and when i would attempt to um it would just kind of get me labeled uh something negative by my peers uh and so instead i thought oh th those things must not be who i really am those things must be uh pathology or something and so the real me is hiding somewhere and i have to and the way i can make it happen is by copying them and what they do and how they act and what they talk about is good um and so for a lot of years i was just mimicking and I got really good at it, so I'm really good at pretending, or as often schizoids refer to it as masking, 100% um, mm -hmm. uh, covert, so uh, at least for a time. I don't know what I am now. I don't know what I would be considered now that I just don't care. I don't know. Hmm. So then you yeah. got the diagnosis. You found out about schizoid personality disorder. And then mm. what, what changed for you? Well, uh, what changed was having something tangible to work with. Uh, and then also just when I discovered that, oh, this thing I have to work with has a lot of flaws and problems because um, it, it, the, the very issue or the very um, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, personality type or whatever, um, has built in... Um, dilemmas that would make it really difficult for the therapeutic community to even study or interact with and so that's why there was even less information and less you know case studies that i could read and try to relate to or information that was like you know what i'm saying like it was just like there was just less stuff out there besides a description of external behaviors right um which was oh you know you're quiet and you keep to yourself and you're private and you don't like to do things with other people and you don't like forming relationships or you don't get anything out of forming them. Like it, it was just a bunch of descriptors. So um, it didn't really tell me anything about who I was. It still felt like, Oh, so I'm just like some identity. I I'm just some zombie without identity. But at some point I was just like, screw that. No, I'm not. I have, I, I have to, I have to be, I'm someone, I'm something of some kind and so i'm like i think they know what it is um and i gotta stop caring about uh, other people judging or um you know looking down on who i think i am um but you know trying to get over those things is really really difficult there's a lot of shame associated to it so 
shame and overcoming these dilemmas or shame and uh who you might be uh inside like mm -hmm. because who you might be inside doesn't really flow very well with the i guess pro social norms of uh your environment almost any environment and most cultures um so especially i mean i'm american so uh it would just be more like a situation where when your parents are telling you oh you're not taking part in things that you're supposed to be or you're not enjoying the things or the reason you're sad is because you're not going out and making friends more um but then you go out and make friends and you get sadder and uncomfortable and uh, more so it's like hmm, okay so if that doesn't work what works um and no one teaches you that there are other ways so you you uh you develop um a almost like the pathology that almost seems to develop inside me is a resentment or shame associated with who i might actually be underneath it all uh and because it's not congruent with my environment it's a bad thing becomes like a bad object of sorts um or a useless or incompetent uh, object whatever identity maybe i was trying to form yeah. uh, or my mind was trying to construct for me um, because it was like oh this is my identity but uh is it really an identity like you start self-doubting who you yeah. are because who you are can't be shared with others uh very easily because if you do say it, you get oh, either weird looks or confused looks or uh, misunderstandings about what you feel or believe and think about and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's like the way you, you are authentically doesn't really fit with the, the mainstream or how the society is constructed. And because no. of that misfit, you get this negative feedback, which then creates shame and other oh, maybe yeah. issues that maybe force you to you know pretend or you know try to fit in but that just creates a loop for you of even it's, it's exhausting being more disconnected. yeah you're not getting anything in return from it so like mimicking um what is pro-social behavior uh in my environment and then um everyone else is doing it and getting something in return meanwhile i'm doing it just to be um to not be castigated or to not be um, set aside or ignored in in, form, in my like needs and things like that like basic needs um like there's just like a lot of stuff that you end up mimicking because you you just need to survive and you're not getting whatever it is everyone else is getting out of it and the stuff that you get something out of the internal world kind of stuff is um is stuff that like if it that oftentimes is treated as if it's lesser uh, by um, normative, I guess, society and people around you. Even if it's not an intentional malevolence, like it's just like it doesn't make sense to them why you would think this or that is more important than this or that. Like why? Mm -hmm. Like why is it? I don't know. Here's a like an easy example is like why is it that the books I read growing up or the comic books or the art I liked was more emotionally, uh, I was more emotionally invested and connected to that stuff than I was say to my cousins and my aunts and my uncles and my uh, sibling and like, like and, and stuff like that. Like I, I will, or making friends, like making friends meant way less to me than my books, my books and the stories and ideas in it were more emotionally like I'm, it was more emotionally connected to that stuff than, than any person uh generally because I, I couldn't relate to them and that somehow makes you that builds up a lot of that shame because you're just like oh i think like if you tell your parents oh i like books better than people they're, they're gonna look at you like what's wrong with you or, oh, oh, there must be something wrong. You need to, like, you, there's something going on with you. You must be something, or blah, blah, blah. Like, it's not an allowed way to be. Mm. That makes any sense. Yeah, yeah so that, that must have felt, like, really invalidating and 
artist. Like you were in scene. Um, yeah, no, it's absolutely invalidating, but you don't know that it's invalidating, um, because, yeah, like, you're, you have no point of reference, like, you just sit there going, um, you can't hear that, somebody's, like, DMing me, but you can't hear that, right? No, But I don't want it to interrupt the thing, but, um, yeah, like, because, because you, but you don't, how, how do I explain this? If, okay, if, like, say I grew up in an environment, Uh, in which, uh, you know, I was into something that was against cultural norms based on, I don't know, my gender or something, right? Like, there's still going to be people like, oh, I'm, a, you know, your little boys don't play with dolls or some shit like that, right? Like, some basic, like, there's going to be like people like that, but there's also going to be people in that same society, they're going to be like, no, it's fine, you shouldn't be able to, and blah, 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 and all this, right? Because it's still kind of, like stuff that would make sense to the average person even the most like um empathetic and you know, like open individual right but if your concerns are like oh i like to sit here and think about bugs and insects all day and not, i don't need friends like that's not something that's as easily palatable to to your to even the most open person uh, they're going to think oh there must be something uh mentally unhealthy about this child or person Why um do you think that is? i think that uh there's a kind of a normative or a neurotypical framework when it comes to like what is the regular stuff you're supposed to be motivated by and care about um like i'm not saying everyone has to care about the same things but there's a kind of like this range of of things that are okay to be uh, hyper fixated or motivated by and you know things like uh, family and uh, relationships like interpersonal relationships and things like that like the having some kind of emphasis on that being an important aspect of your life um, is considered to be like integral uh, to development uh, or, or to what is normal for a individual to preoccupy themselves with and when your way of being counters that significantly i'm not just talking about like oh i'm introverted or something right i'm talking like just you're just not motivated at all by those sorts of things um that kind of turns you into a weirdo and the reason it is is because your your behavior isn't pro-social to your environment like it's like oh Um, you know, what's wrong with him? Uh, he, we invited him to the company party or we invited, I invited him to my birthday party and all the kids want to come, but he doesn't want to come. There's something wrong with that guy. We're not wanting to come to my party um, or whatever. Uh, or my parents getting annoyed because every time they took me to a social event, I would want to just play my games and sit somewhere away from everyone. Uh, and it wasn't because, oh, I hated everyone or I wanted them to like, you know, it wasn't some, there's like a, a negativity that's kind of projected onto the person that just wants to be doing something else. And isn't like, if, if my parents would have just let me be in my corner playing my video games and said, Oh, that's okay. That's fine. That's what you care about. But we would like you to come to the party this year with the family. I'd be like, okay, that's fine. Um, as long as I could take my game boy or books, and then nobody bothers me about it and nobody like shames me for it then yeah it probably it probably wouldn't turn out as uh i wouldn't probably have turned out as shame like shame filled as i might have mm. when it comes to like being i guess odd or eccentric or different in what mm -hmm. i care about mm -hmm. so so would you say that you, you were born that way or uh, was, or just so it was kind of developed uh for me it's it's That's what's interesting. Like, um, in my opinion, uh, the because I talked to you, I think mentioned it, but um, I think the schizoid pathology or the, the more pathological things, such as like a, you know a uh, a disgust or a, an aversion toward any kind of intimacy of any of any kind, or um, 
like uh, feelings, like like the anhedonia and the evolution and things like that. I don't think I was born with that stuff. I I think uh, that stuff had developed via being born with a kind of different way of experiencing life, um, like mm -hmm. just just having a different emphasis or focus on what it is that I value. Uh, I, in my environment in comparison to the average child who is around me. Um, like, and, and when those behaviors aren't congruent with what society expects of you, um, then you're going to get a combination of both uh, rejection from your peers as well as rejection from your authority figures. Um, yeah, but I don't, yeah, so I would say like those parts, the like the way my brain works and gravitates toward what I often call abstract things. Um, I would say that part I was born with, uh, mm -hmm. but the other stuff uh, was definitely a, an environmental factor. Like mm -hmm. I, I probably would have been a lot less misanthropic or whatever uh, it, had I been accepted early on as a you know different sort of kid. Uh, and that that's okay to be a different sort of kid that has a different sort of expression and a different sort of emphasis on what they care about. Um, that doesn't make me a psycho. It doesn't make me uh, just weird or bad or, you know, shameful. Right. Um, so, so it's a combination. Because, so because you were born in a different, you know, in a different way, you, you know, you're a unique individual and... You process things differently or experience life in a different manner than let's say an average or neurotypical and person. definitely the average person yeah it's absolutely different i have memories of that since like i was really little like just and i uh, i uh, the schizos that i speak to oftentimes have similar memories of oh you know when i was six or five um i wasn't like i was told that i was always distracted or that i wasn't following the rules or the social norms I was supposed to follow, or that I was questioning things I shouldn't be questioning, or yada, yada, yada. It was always like some kind of, like you were always at odds with your uh, social environment in some capacity. Um, and it wasn't because you were intentionally trying to create problems or be malicious or, you know, like a rebel or something. It was just more like, this doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand why I have to do this, talk about this, care about this. I care about and want to talk about different things. And um, it didn't, it doesn't work out that way very well um, mm. for most people. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you can imagine, like people grow up having felt similarly because of having some different or, or some one or two beliefs or something that run contrary with their environment right like if uh you know like i mentioned earlier like if you're a little boy that likes things that a little boys aren't supposed to normally like um you know you're gonna be looked at funny already uh but when everything about you is just so different um and you're just so incongruent um you just become like this oddity that they can't, they don't know how to manage or work with or do anything with. Um, I don't know. So, so because of this kind of family, your family situation and how it doesn't seem like, you know, your, your, your family understood what you're going through and your priorities mm. and what you focus on, Not how did all. it then impact your, you know, later development and, well, I mean, obviously, it made, it made, well, it made me more like, like a joke, but it, it made me more just kind of a dick. Like, I just, I just stopped caring. But it was, I turned into somebody that was like, oh, the world doesn't care about me. So fuck the world, right? Um, it could burn in hell. And I want to make the world just sad as I feel, um, because it, it doesn't do anything but bring me discomfort and um, emptiness. So I want to make it feel empty and uncomfortable too like that that was my kind of thinking process when i was a teenager and in my early 20s it was just like um like i started how do i put this like everyone else was telling me like oh this is what matters this is what you should care about my parents my peers my teachers everyone 
And then I would just be like, fuck you, no, I care about this. Your things are stupid. My things um, are like, my stuff is what matters. Your your stuff is the stupid stuff. Um, and so like, so I would just throw things in people's faces, like in school, it would be more like, oh, uh, they'd be like, oh, look at, we're going to celebrate this, you know, thing or tradition or school event. And then I'd be the first kid that just goes, oh, that's pointless because this and that and all the stuff you're talking about is empty and I can show you how it's empty because this and that reason and nobody cares about this and this and everyone's preoccupied with shit that doesn't matter and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was just, that's how it kind of affected my behavior. Like it made me um, just hate uh, society, right? Like it made me hate um my peers and uh, my authority figures and distrust them. Um, and I guess hate's a strong word, but it's more of like a, like a resentment than a hate. I think uh, it's more of just like a feeling resentful about even being born, even being alive. Um, because I just, there was nothing to look forward to. There was nothing to, to be happy about in my life at the time because the stuff you know and people would tell me it's like oh you have this and that why aren't you happy what's wrong with you it's like but well, those are things those things don't make me happy that's not the stuff that makes me happy i don't I, it's a, it's kind of a difficult thing to explain but yeah it, it, it definitely negatively impacted my behavior uh and it's i've been trying to undo a lot of that work a lot of those things um in the last decade and a half so i was a dick but, yeah, i was i was a little asshole like but you know I, i'm trying to think of like the ways i could describe how i was a little asshole i was just like not going to my classes i was if if teachers or people would tell me like oh you school matters and it's important you need to go to your class you're smart boy you need to, like it would just be like but you know fuck you know your your standards don't matter to me your institutions don't matter to me your uh expectations don't matter to me like um it just and, uh, that's how i was like y yeah against like existence like against society as a uh, as such right because i didn't um connect to any of it like i and no one it felt like no one wanted to connect to anything i cared about um and i couldn't talk about anything I cared about because it would be seen as lesser than by my environment or unimportant um like it, it just it would never get prioritized over all these other things that the world seemed to believe was a higher priority um such as like interpersonal relationships and trends and uh, status and shit like that like all this stuff you know how you look to others how how others perceive you like what's like the primary concern in something mm -hmm. especially like in high school uh, and, and what would you say years. are the dominant emotions and feelings were during that time like resentment for sure resentment nothing but resentment Resentment and, and disgust, um, because, uh, I, I mean, I mean, that's it. All right, that's all I can, those are, those are definitely the dominant feelings. There's a lot of angst, man. a lot of just anger and frustration um, for the world that, like, no matter how much you yelled, couldn't understand anything you were saying, um, you know, it's like, what, like, in my head, they would ask me, like, why are you so sad all the time? It's like, how are you not? Like, mm. um, that would be my response. How are you not? How are you happy with any of this? And, or I can't pretend that everything is fine like you seem to. But for them, maybe things were fine because they were getting some kind of reward out of their environment and their peer groups and stuff. And I was getting nothing. I and, and it wasn't for lack of trying. I used to join clubs. I used to like my parents used to put me in all kinds of stuff to make me more social. Um, they put me like in Boy Scouts. They put me on church stuff. They put me in Little League. Like 
you know, and I don't fault my mother. It was mostly my mother, but I don't fault her for it. I used to resent her for that stuff. But I think about it now, and she was just working with whatever she thought was that way. Right? She was just going, oh, you know, my little mijito is not um, socializing or developing the same way as the other kids. I'm worried that he's going to get, like, socially left behind. So, um, I have to, so that we avoid him being miserable down the line and not having friends, uh, we were going to force them into, like, these social activities and clubs and stuff and i couldn't connect to anyone there right and even when i would find something interesting about the activities it, when i would express that to my peers that's not what they were there for right like it, like it, the, if i liked something about being in boy scouts it was learning about wildlife and uh and learning about plants and learning about like all sorts of sort of like uh, survival stuff like things like that was interesting to me but all the boys at the voice in the boy scouts were mostly motivated by making friends and um like uh and, you know talking about this or relationships or girls or talking about school and their friends and funny things that happen with their friends or with their families and and those weren't things that I was connecting to. I was just sitting there like, hey, can't we just talk about uh, these birds? Like, these birds seem kind of cool. It's like, why do you care about birds? It's dumb. Okay. And then I just think yeah, in my head, it's... like, why do you care about people? They're dumb. Like, right. Why do you care about gossip? Why do you care about how others perceive you? That's dumb. Like, But if you said that, then you'd be the weird one for saying that. Yeah, I'm. I'm just wondering, like you know, what is happening really? Because you could, you could flip it and say that it's the, the average or the neurotypical person that it's over focused on, on other people and relationships. Yeah, but the problem is, is uh, you could say that, but you don't have the numbers. Right, right? So it's, it's all about it's, the it's, numbers. It's a numbers game because if. If you, especially if somebody's like, you know, like, was anything like me growing up, um, you don't have anyone to turn you to, to, to regulate your own mood or kind of uh, have a shared value system with, right? So you look to your parents, oh, your parents agree with the peers and the peers agree with the parents and everyone seems to be agreeing with each other. So that makes you feel just connected and alienated even further because you don't have anyone to turn to generally unless you got lucky enough to have someone in your life similar to you um you don't have anyone to turn to to go hey don't you think humans are too preoccupied with this sort of stuff and for them to go yeah i agree like when you don't have anyone that's going yeah i agree with you you're right you know your entire childhood and teenage years i mean you're gonna just believe you're yeah you're broken or something right. that you're, there's something uh, you're wrong with damaged you. or there's something and then people literally telling you there's something wrong with you, right? right your peers telling you there's something wrong with you you get bullied because of how you behave or how you are or maybe you're more passive nature about things like you get bullied for it right like i got yeah. bullied for years um because i was like a quiet kind of passive kid yeah, I talked a lot, but I always wanted to talk about things that I found interesting, and that would get me bullied too, because it was like you're this annoying nerd or something. Um, it would just be negative, uh, negative associations to who I was, the identity I was developing, because it didn't, it didn't fall in line with my peers or environment. And yeah. I'm not just basing this off my own. I mean, this is my experiences, but I hear the same story from so many people that I guess grow up and are eventually diagnosed schizoid. Um, you know, they eventually develop a lot of these these traits to just literally give up on the world um, in a either secret way if you're covert or in a totally overt way uh, in which, you know, you just become a shut-in, right? You become somebody that doesn't go out, doesn't interact, lives somewhere in the most like minimal way possible works as like a janitor overnight or you know something where you don't have to deal with people mm. and then you just 
you just go through these kind of cycles like in, and people might not know anything about you and think you're fine because you're not complaining you're just keeping to yourself but you know you're still sitting there at night um thinking about why you're even alive uh while the world continues moving around you and you don't have anything to say to it because you don't connect to what it's giving you it just feels like you're in a prison like mm -hmm. a, a weird internal prison of like loneliness and, so do you still feel that way these days now as an adult now after researching all that of what's concerned um i would say yes and no um like because i'm married now i have kids um i have people that i care for uh but there's an existential component that's always incredibly lonely until you find other people like you like because even if like say you have i guess would be more neurotypical people that care about you they, they can they can only care about you the way they know how to care about people they can't care about you the way you wish you were cared for in the same sort of way based on your own kind of understanding uh, and, and then when you care for people back in your way, sometimes that translates into that you don't care for them in their minds because you're not caring about them the right way. Um, if that makes any sense, it's it's I kind of like a mismatch. It's like a mismatch of values. So, so like now, yeah, um, I would say I feel a little bit better, but I would say the reason I feel less ex existentially uh, empty. And alone is because of the community I've created and the people uh, I've become friends with uh, along the way now. Um, you know, such a tenuous word of friends because, like, uh, that's kind of what I help uh, some schizoids do is try to reframe what the word friend means um, and, and to create a new point of reference, which is like, okay, friend doesn't have to be what you've grown up to believe friend is supposed to be friend can be something else in your own kind of uh different sort of way and it you can find someone else that understands that and feels like has that same definition of friend as you uh that makes sense to both of you and then connect via those channels like it's just before the internet how how were people like if we're if we're I mean if I'm if I'm part of a small portion of the population that's neurodivergent in a specific way like how what are the chances of coming across other people that you can mm -hmm. connect to uh, before the internet right and I grew up in a pre-internet um, I'm 37 so I grew up pre-internet for most of my like childhood and a lot of my teenage years right like um, I mean, that's one of the benefits, I would say, of being schizoid or developing this sort of stuff now, especially if you're like in your early 20s, is that there's a, there's more of a possibility of actually locating other people like you. Um, but it's still really, really difficult. It's still not an easy thing. So creating that community and connecting with other people who are similar to how you work, how you operate, that's mm -hmm. been very helpful to you. No, absolutely. It's been mm -hmm. like... It's something you have to retrain yourself uh, because like your brain, my brain was essentially wired to believe that there was no chance of ever locating people like that. Like that, oh, I'm just some fucking one off um, outlier of a person that's, you know, just going to always be existentially um, alone and misunderstood and, and so on and so forth. And I have to just settle with you know, enjoying what little pleasures I can find and, uh, and, uh, and just deal with that. Right. That was my perspective like before it was like, Oh, yeah. I just have to resign myself to feeling this constant existential sort of emptiness. Like it's just, uh, it's just a disease or something that I have. Like, right. And um, that, you know, maybe they, ha they can't figure out. And so I just have to live with it. I'm never going to be as, comfortable inside my body uh inside my society as everyone else seems to be most of the time um not everyone but you know what i'm saying um yeah i found i found it common to hear from other people with schizoid personality saying that either like 
they don't even feel human or like they don't belong to humanity. Like it's like really deeply existential yeah. isolation and this disconnect. Well, yeah, and I think it's a lot. A lot of it has to do with me. Like, like mine had to do with like just not having anyone to connect with. Um, because um, I mean, I I don't think that this is an exclude. I I don't think that these sort of feelings of alienation are exclusive to say someone that ends up being schizoid. I think there's plenty of uh, other types of cluster eight people or autistic people out there that um, because they have a different sense of what's important to them and what motivates them and rewards them, um, they still feel like the odd person out in most environments and in most situations. Um, and uh, it's just like this lack of acceptance of what it is that you are and that it's okay to be what you are and, and it's funny too because i relate to uh even like like even if somebody that doesn't have these particular issues the same ones as me like i can kind of um empathize with like other people in other sorts of i guess neurodivergent groups that um that suffer with the sort of feeling of uh like existential alienation like like for example like um there's a lot of like uh you know i don't know trans people or something right like that have like this sort of feeling of i can't like somebody with gender dysphoria or something right like they feel like they, their body isn't in line with their existence and so that makes them feel like they want to erase themselves or and like, you know, having to hide some aspect, some valuable aspect of their identity from their environment because of the consequences of exposing it and then having to like live a, a certain type of life or, you know, a certain number of years and so on and so forth, depending on your culture and environment, like shit like that. Like those, even if somebody is, um, you know, I guess near divergent in a different way like that. Uh, I relate to it. I can understand the sorrow that comes with that. The sorrow and and a lack of, I don't know, happiness in such an existence. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know where else to go with that. <laughs> so, what sort of, if you don't mind me asking, what sort of main challenges do you face in your life right now? um like in regards to you know maybe your mental health or schizoid personality um well i mean like if you want to run down the, the stuff i deal with is uh, i'm a diagnosed dysthymia so i'm always kind of low grade depressed all the time um and then occasionally get spikes of like more severe depression but those are usually triggered by um specific actions or events that especially make me feel like existentially um isolated or alienated or just like some kind of existential reject um to humanity or existence so i mean when stuff triggers those sort of feelings um it, i can definitely spin into a severe depression it can be pretty crippling uh, but most of the time it's just kind of this low grade malaise um that you know occasionally i can i can manage because i've been dealing with it for so long so that that part's okay um the anxiety uh that comes with like feeling constantly stressed by being in an environment that you don't really connect to but having to like expend energy and time and effort in order to satisfy the needs of a society you can't connect to because they still have expectations, right, uh, about your behavior and who you are and what you're supposed to do. And, like, even if, like, say you have personal goals um, that are kind of eccentric or whatever, you still have to play their game in order to achieve even their goals. Um, and when you're not getting anything back, by playing their game because you don't care about things like people liking you or status or um, certain types of resources or whatever. Like if you don't care about that stuff, if you don't get anything out of it, 
our power. Um, like you're just, I don't know. It's you just you just feel it like you're you feel like you're spending more energy than getting anything back. And I don't think any animal uh, functions well in those conditions. Right? You just feel overworked and taxed all the time by just having to be around and do things and interact with people um, that you feel don't couldn't even understand what what the fuck to do with you were you not just catering to their uh, their their needs and demands. It, it's all very vague, abstract shit. So it's really difficult for me to like give you a more concrete example of what I mean. Um, I know that a lot of if there's schizoids listening, like they might get what I'm talking about. Um, it's like it's kind of stuck, it's talking. So you can have maybe like one so called bad experience, like you don't belong, like you don't want to deal with that situation. You spend so much energy, but it goes nowhere but then if you have to do it repeatedly that's where the yeah yeah it's just repeat and when everything everything uh, you're doing and everything that other people do runs contrary to your own value system and your own motivations and you just have to just accept that and adjust to that because the vast majority of you're like uh, you're just a minority thinker like it's just it doesn't matter like if the world is telling you these are the things that matter but those things that matter don't matter to you the same way you still have to cater to their needs because otherwise you are you know a pariah or a bad person or somebody that's not deserving of anything Good. so then how, how do you cope with this social stuff well, the way I'm coping with it is um, having a wife and kids. Well, my wife, that's more understanding. You know, she's neurotypical you know, in that sense. Like, she cares about those types of things that I don't understand. But since she's more understanding about my way of experiencing and thinking about things, um, you know, she doesn't, um, she does a better job of not, re like, resenting me or, uh, getting upset with me for not necessarily producing the type of results that are expected of, of a regular person. Uh, when so, like, if I like, if I don't want to go to a party or a family gathering, um, like I will make the effort to go to them. But if I say, "Oh, I'm not up for it," the fact that they respect it and go, "It's fine. You don't have to go." and don't show resentment or sense of shame toward it. Like they don't make me feel sh ashamed of saying I'm not interested in going, I'm too tired. Uh, and they understand why, because you've explained it to them. That stuff, just being even somewhat understood and tolerated uh, in that sense can be very helpful. Um, but also um, what's helping me cope a lot is like I said, the community I'm building and being able to have conversations like this openly um, without feeling like, like I'm a, like some fucking sociopath psycho or something like for, for believing what I believe in. I don't know. Like just, just not care. Like saying, I don't care about these things. Like, like you, you can just start naming stuff that most people probably care about. And I don't care about them. Mm. Like in most so cases, or, or I care about them for very different reasons that aren't considered normal um so what, what would you say you care about then what are, what are your i care about concepts Thanks. i care about like um ideas i care about like instantiations of things right like um like okay the way somebody cares about a person right for me i care about the collection of traits that that person um is made up of right and then the narratives and concepts and the archetypes of what it is to be a good human being and how those stories and ideas develop like and then people living up to those sort of um very nice sort of archetypes and stuff that i like that i find aesthetically sort of connected to is how i develop a connection to another person or individual so it's it's like 
um, how do I put this? Like, okay, I'll just take you for example since you're here. Like, the work you do, uh, your, the motivation for the work you do, for your channel and stuff like that, your, um, your mannerisms, your uh, politeness, your sort of respect for the people that you're having conversations with, all that sort of stuff, those kind of traits uh, that, I, that you display in your behavior uh, are traits that I consider to be good in my own subjective way. And so then those are the things that I care about is people living to those archetypes that I find pleasing. Um, and that's how I determine this is a person that I like. Um, but it's, is it about you specifically? Is it about Joanna? No, um, I don't like it's, you're not like, a cool person to me because you're Joanna. You're a cool person to me because you, you do these things, hmm. uh, and you you do these actions that I consider to be good in my own subjective experience. Where you just stop doing those things, then I probably would stop liking you. And hmm. I. But you know what I'm saying? Even the word liking you or liking someone is a weird way to put it. Um, it's, it's, it's really fucking difficult to talk about this stuff because it's so, um, it's so, uh, like, it's so different. Uh, and how, cause, cause people won't want to hear that, right? Like, like, how would you say it's then different than like neurotypical? Because, person, like, you know? because, like, okay, I don't. Like, okay, if somebody, if you love someone, right, they want to hear that you love them, right? Uh, um, I don't, it's not, see what I'm saying? Like, it's like an interpersonal thing. It's like, I love that individual, right? It's, it's like, no, it, for me, I love the instantiation of it, that individual as representative of, like, the stuff that makes them up. Right, like the, the 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 narrative they've created with their own life, the archetypes they live up to, the the aesthetic things that they participate in or or express themselves like, like all those things are the things that make me go, oh, this person is someone I can, I, I like, I love those things, and this person is made up of those things, so thus I care about this person, um, but I it, it's. It's difficult. Uh, we're, but we're, most we're people just... don't want to hear all that. They just want to hear, oh, I love you because you're special. Mm. It's like, I don't think I'm special. Right? Like, I I don't think I'm special. I don't think anyone is special um, as far as because, oh, just for existing. Um, now, what makes you special are very specific traits and, and things like that uh, that make you a person that I possesses your person a, a person that possesses the things that i care about not i care about you just because you're a person right you could be an octopus right. like i don't right. care like you could be a squid right. a talking squirrel like it wouldn't make a difference to me what you are but... I'm, I'm just wondering there is this idea in psychology that has this there's this theory of like this multiplicity of the self so that we don't have this one identity one self but we are a mm -hmm. collection of different different parts or different modes different mm -hmm. kind of personalities w yeah. would you say this is like something no i mean like i would say i gravitate see? toward that I, I would gravitate toward that idea, idea of what a person is far more than what people generally are referring to when they talk about people I would say that's that's probably closer to how I would describe my connection to others or my own identity. Um, it's like this kind of like multifaceted, just clusterfuck of shit uh, that can alter and change and ebb and flow and stuff like that. Um, but like most people don't want you to perceive them like that. Like they're uncomfortable mm -hmm. with that. They, they want to be perceived as these specific things. Um, this is like, you know, you, they want you to see their, I guess, their ego or whatever. Like, 
They're just their personality they present, and they want you to love that personality that they present exclusively, not anything, any complex underlying traits. And like, they're like, I, I don't know. It's so weird. Like, I, it's so hard to explain. I, I do you know what I'm talking about? Does anyone? <laughs> I just don't. Oh, I'm man. trying to trying to understand. <laughs> no, it's it's I it's 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 weird. If you ask the right questions, I can find the right uh, way of explaining it. Like my like for example, like my like my like generally like your girlfriend or your boyfriend are not going to be like oh okay with you saying oh I like I like. The all the traits that make up who you are and little bits and pieces and those, those you're an instantiation of the type of person or archetype that I find to be aesthetically pleasing and appreciate in existence like they don't want to hear all that they, they just want to hear oh, uh, oh you love them because they are special um, and it's like no that's not how it works for me like if, if there was a different individual with the same things happening then i probably would think that they're also a good person or but in in your case you get extra points because you're somebody that i found and i interact with and now have like more layers of connection with um because i established them over time with you not i don't know <laughs> uh, it, there it's has just, to be like configuration of yeah things. like like it's funny because when i tell a lot of schizoids this stuff like when we tell each other this stuff they'll go yeah i get it that makes sense that's how that's how like me i'm friends with somebody that's schizoid right like like i say that kind of stuff and they go yeah that makes sense to me i also think i understand that and connect to you in that same way but like like you can't i can't tell somebody like oh if you die um i'm gonna be okay mm. like um and not okay as in like i won't be sad or all fucked up about it it's just like i accept what death is and it's inevitable and you're going to die and i philosophically accepted that that is the condition and that I will also perish in a similar way, and that all all things must come to an end at some point, uh, and shit like that. Like people don't want to hear that stuff. Like I, that stuff makes me feel cozy, and uncomfortable. People don't like that stuff. That stuff makes them uncomfortable and scared and afraid. And I don't, I don't understand why. But I mean, I understand why. I just don't, I don't relate to it same way okay, from, so from some perspective like i could say that you're maybe like more in touch with this deeper existential real stuff but it's not even that... about in touch it's just this is where i live right like i don't have to i didn't make i didn't sit down read a bunch of books and try to become more in touch with stuff like that this is just who i am like i'm this is just what i this is where I, I think and I experience things. This is where I exist. I don't, um, I didn't have to make an effort to get here. In fact, I have to make an effort to do the opposite, right? I have to make an effort to be where they are and thinking about life in the way they usually do. I, that's, that requires more energy, more effort to be there with them in the present or whatever um, than it does for me to be over here in abstract la la land. Like, that that's comfortable for me i'm fine here um, is it really abstracting because yeah it just it came to my mind that okay so you could call it abstracting because you're talking about all these ideas and, and you know well it's just expanding outwardly what, what it's like right but on a more practical level it sounds like we are talking about like very practical and like very concrete experiences and things and they're how things are they're, they're not concrete i mean i mean i mean I'm, I'm not sure what you mean like like something that's concrete is like um I something don't know. that you experience S uh, sort of i mean because so, it, 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 it's sort of like okay like it, like when i talk when i'm talking about something going from more concrete to abstract i'm referring more to like like okay um me and you 
like, okay, uh, we are doing a recording for a channel uh, and we're interacting for that reason. Uh, but for, in my head, I just go, oh, no. What's really happening is we're two pieces of flotsam consciousness that's attempting to connect to something larger than ourselves and for whatever of a reason finding uh doing this facilitates our ability to help others which in turn somehow takes us closer to some kind of like philosophical sense of meaning and purpose for existing See, that, that's, and like that's but that's, the, that's and then beyond that like so then like the personhood or the individual is actually like can be cast aside or, or um, can be forgotten temporarily. Um, and you get lost, I get lost like in ideas and forget that I even exist when I'm in there. But it's like about, it's weird. maybe concrete is not the best word. But yeah, I'm not, yeah. Like, I mean, it's there's, like there's something real. that matters. It's, like it's real, real to real me. That's stuff kind of. real to me. People right? don't talk about the reality. They talk about like what they had for dinner kind of things. Like, okay, no. that's fine. But that's reality to them. But that's that's right. my point. But like, but they're layers, they, right? <laughs> yeah, but they're in different layers. Like that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like if you talk to someone that's, I don't know how many conversations you've had with people that are like autistic, right? But they they are in a completely different layer of what matters to them, right? Um, mm -hmm. So if you if you're talking to somebody that's autistic, they're gonna seem too concrete even for the average person, right? Because because even if like if you tell them, oh. Um, where do you want to go today or wh what do you want to eat today it's like they might have zero concern for what they're going to be eating that day or who they're going to be interacting with and more concerned with what particular activity um that they're concentrated on and how efficiently they're going to be able to do it and participate in it um like that's probably what will motivate them and excite them more than like anything interpersonal um uh, it's it, it's it's hard. It's hard. It's a very kind of complex sort of conversation. Like yeah, that starts that, sounding metaphysical, like no, layers well, I, and reality. I, I, and... <laughs> well, it is. It is in a in a sense. Like the best way I described it before in like other stuff I've talked about is like and and I mentioned this a few times where it's like okay, you have the forest, right, and then you have the people that live in the forest and chop wood and collect stuff for a fire and want to create a situation in which they can reproduce and procreate and create a community and have babies and so on and so forth. And then there's the, you know, the, the, the autist in, in the forest just wants to study the, the bark on the trees and the insects that are on that and how those insects work and how they function and what, and like they, they lose, they lose track or interest in, the other stuff that I said, like, you know, trying to build a house and uh, trying to, you know, uh, find a nest and uh, um, like all that sort of stuff that, you know, uh, that I that the average person is concerned with. No, that they, they, they just discard all that and they're concentrated on the bark and the in the in the structure of the tree and the insects and everything else inside and, and go deeper and deeper until like, you know, they get lost in it. And that's where they're comfortable. That's where they're happy. Um, meanwhile, the, uh, you know, the cluster A sort of person like me is like, oh, who cares about that? Let's, let's uh, look at the whole forest and let's leave the forest. Why are we even in a forest? Like, what's beyond the forest? Um, That's exactly what came to my mind. Like, this kid so would just climb the tree and see what's going on. Yeah, like, what's out there? there? Oh, look, look over there. There's other things yeah. that are in forest. I want to go there and look at more things. And, um, look at so much stuff look at the stuff what about the sky look at these stars like how come we're not looking at the sky instead and so like it's just uh and then you know everyone else around you is like no no what are you doing get down from the tree we have to you know build like, this hut and this cabin and we need to find this warmth and we need to you know find mates to have babies with and create families and and, and do all these things this is what matters it's climbing the trees and looking at all that stuff doesn't matter 
Uh, that guy over there looking at bugs all day, he's crazy. He, that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is this. Um, and so, like, you know, but, like, when you're looking at everything, you're going, oh, why, why does it even matter that you want to do these things right. over here? Like, who cares about that stuff? You're eventually going to just die, and, uh, you know, and it'll all be for naught. So how about you concentrate on more, like, big stuff over here? Because that's that's what really matters, and it's like, you know, and uh, and, and obviously I'm a, I'm of the opinion that I'm neither wrong or right. Like I don't think those big things matter more. I just think that's what I think matters more. Um, it's just a different way of perceiving and experiencing mm -hmm. life. But but it's it's I'm able to metacognate that much. Like I'm able to to now kind of go oh, being concerned with the I guess the average the normal stuff. Um, is just as valid. It's just as important um, mm. and just an integral part of the human experience and for humanity in general. Um, and um, but but my problem is is that I'm willing to accept that about them, but they're not willing to accept that about us. Um, if that makes sense, and yes. that creates I'm, resentment. I'm, I'm hopeful for the future, and. Uh... Uh. Yeah, it's good that we have this kind of conversation. I, I think I'll be, about. I'll be dead, I'll be dead long before uh, that happens. But that's okay. I'm okay with being dead before that happens. That's why I'm trying to get the ball rolling on some of this stuff. Like I don't expect it to happen in my lifetime, nor do I need it to. Um, I'm doing this for like future generations, for like my own children. Because like, what if my kids end up like me, or their kids? Right. That's important too. More children will be born like this, and um. It'd be nice to have a more accepting world. Yeah, so. yeah. So, how would you just so maybe we can start wrapping things up slowly? What sort of tip, tips would you give to someone with schizoid personality? Pets. What sort of tips? Oh, like, tips! I thought you said pets. I'm like, I'm like, oh, all <laughs> kinds of pets, but like lizards <laughs> and snakes, um, bats. No, but um, uh, I mean, as far as tips go, um, I would say don't don't believe that you're always going to be some isolated person that will never be understood by anyone in your environment ever. Um, you just need a different point of reference. Um, and um, you just need the right people to talk to and the right type of people that have the same experiences as you and once you develop that you'll actually have a closer connection to your own emotional range and your sense of identity that feels so far away and like impossible sometimes for a lot of schizoids um so i mean as far as tips go is don't i mean don't give up on that hope um because you live in an age in which it's more attainable than it ever has been for someone like this um, because of the internet, because of things like Discord and everything else that allows you to just communicate between time zones so easily between nations that you can find even the, the smallest, like, like somebody can have a rare disease and now actually find like the five other people that have it, right? Like they can actually find them over the internet. Um, obviously there's way more people that are like me than there is, you know, with a specific type of rare disease or something but but point is there's people out there that you can connect to and and they can support you and you can support them um so be hopeful uh that it's not an impossible pipe dream um i think that's really beneficial as far i'm not really good uh at practical tips unless i get like a specific scenario put in front of me oh the reason like I, I asked this question is because it sounds like you you, you kind of made it work for yourself like what well, i mean so far right like i i'm not perfect um i make certain so, things work for myself so that's why i asked this question because i thought like maybe there's something you know maybe there's some kind of wisdom you could share i don't know like i'm just trying to think there's nothing like universal as far as that stuff goes it's like i mean it depends like in what it depends on what the topic is right like what 
what what am I giving advice on here? Like existence? Like it's just too it's too much. Like what am I supposed to do? Like accepting You try to give people, being yeah, alive? Like I don't advice on the existence. like I, I don't know like if you're saying, oh, what are your tips when it comes to like, you know, seeking therapy? Or what are your tips when it comes to uh you know dealing Okay, so with let work? me You know what I'm saying? I'm like get a bit more it's precise. too it's too big, like too much. <laughs> so tips regarding, you know, well-being in everyday life, making it work for themselves so they Like can getting up pursue in the morning. goals, these kind of things, working towards their goals, working Mm -hmm. towards, you know, better, maybe better quality of life, something that keeps people going. Oh, uh, what are my tips for making you want to actually get up in the morning? Um, my tips are that your look. for what matters to you even if it's not necessarily in line with your environment live toward waking up for those goals ignore the fact that your environment might not understand it or accept it keep working toward them keep um basically hustling to uh, attempt to uh grow those kind of more strange eccentric goals uh, That or idiosyncratic goals, and then find individuals that share those goals or respect those goals, and then present those efforts to those people, not to the environment or to the people that might not uh, accept or appreciate your efforts uh, in, in what they might be. Um, so just, it's kind of like, Like, even if currently your goal is to be left alone so that you could get back to your own devices or be left to your own devices, let that be current. Like, let that be the goal that makes you wake up, at least for now, until you can find something a little more substantial. Um, even if it's like a video, like, even if it's like I need to get up in the morning so that I can go to my job and do the things so that I can pay my bills so that I could finally sit down and read my books and play video games. or or draw or whatever like let that be important enough like those things are just as valuable they're just as important as all this other bullshit that everyone's claiming is more important uh you know you're 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 you daydreaming you you, you daydreaming and thinking about things uh and and your internal world is just as valuable and enough and enough of a valid reason to motivate you to get up in the morning and do whatever bullshit needs to get done in order to get back to it um i i i don't know if that makes sense but like i think that's enough like what you believe to be important is enough you don't need to keep applying it to your environment you don't need to keep comparing it to what uh norms exist because I mean, realistically, none of that even matters. Nothing does, but whatever. I'm Well, okay that was with very that. nice to say. Very nice Yeah, to say. I mean, Thank you. I, I guess. I don't know. I felt like I said nothing, but I, I can't tell half the time, to be honest. So, do you think, is there anything else you would like to share? Anything significant that we didn't talk about? Any, any kind of question that I missed, maybe? Um, I mean, I guess there's something I would say, um, to anybody out there that's like, you know, diagnosed or whatever, schizoid or schizotypal or whatever kind of cluster A kind of person, some kind of neurodivergent cluster A person that's out there that, you know, is dealing with some of the problems and stuff I'm, I'm sort of mentioning or discussing, um, we need to develop an attitude of sort of fuck it. um in the sense that it's like yeah we live in this like environment that's kind of inhospitable a lot of the time but the only way to change any of that shit is to band together uh and to work together and to express what's inside and then find the people that will appreciate it so that they can fuel it and create community and create more connections that make sense to us Because if everyone just, if all the kids always just sit at home, you know, feeling like shit and don't draw, don't write, don't 
produce something, express things. Don't make videos or create music or whatever because you know you're sitting there going like oh everything is dreadful and i'm disconnected and nothing's mattered and it's just hey, i had to only a fill and all that kind of shit like i get it i get it i get i get why you feel that way i get why you would want to just give up and do nothing uh and not attempt, like just be like left alone and just use escapism all day um, I understand that. I respect that because I understand why it's so difficult to want to accomplish anything. Um, honestly, I think half the time that evolution that is often described is because of that you get excited about one thing and then you go, wait, if I even if I do this, it won't matter because this reason, that reason, that reason, it'll fail and it won't. Nobody cares and nothing cares and it doesn't matter and it's pointless. And then you give up on things like constantly. Um, don't is what i'm saying fuck it do it anyway um and then find people like yourself because now you can because internet is nice and let them see those things and let others flourish with you and look at their things and tell them what you think about it, so on and so forth it's 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 really it's a really stupid piece of advice because saying fuck it is such a difficult thing to kind of really describe to somebody like I, uh, I don't know, I don't know what kind I'm saying. Let go of everything and just, just do whatever do the hell you just want. Fucking, just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Like you're gonna find people out there. They're gonna appreciate it in the way that you want them to, and in the way that makes sense to you. Right? But you're also gonna find a lot of people that might appreciate it in a way that doesn't make sense to you. Like if you're an artist, or... that's okay. Who cares? Just fucking do it. I don't know, man. That's the, you know, that's the only thing we can do is just say fucking keep moving forward. Uh, and then eventually actually find a reward system, which I think that's what I'm trying to create. Mm -hmm. Even if there isn't one right now. Or in good ones. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining today and sharing all your stories. 